Tip top trippers, my name is Donato and welcome to my latest video where I'll be taking you on my video diary of Yorkshire Marathon 2021. <laughs> Let's go. But before I go into the detail of the video diary, if you are new here and if you haven't already done so, it'd be fabulous if you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe because it really does help this channel. And just to give a bit of a spoiler alert, it's the day before the actual marathon because when I start filming the actual day of the diary, it's going to be dark and not so very good light. So fast forward now to the Sunday morning. I hope you enjoy this. Let's go. Yes, guys, it is now Sunday morning. It's uh, coming up to 5.30. Yes, I'm feeling a bit throaty, but hey, Let's go do this. It's it's so early. Look how dark it is outside. Yeah, you can see the reflection of me. It's pitch black. Anyway, <laughs> that's why I avoid the uh, stuff on the floor here. So yeah, let's get ready and um, get in the van and take you to York for the Yorkshire Marathon. Oh man, two years I've been waiting for this. Two years, two years. <laughs> Well, that was quite a journey. I've now arrived, it's what, just gone 7 a.m. I've arrived at the airfield where we have the park and run transport. If we look outside, oh look, it's still dark, I'll put the light on here. I've got no idea how this is going to look, but anyway, you can hear my voice. I'm all excited, I'm gonna get changed and get on the bus and obviously have some breakfast, which as those of you who've been watching regularly will know, it's just bagel and water. So let's go. So we're here, I'll say at the airport, airfield, eat my bagel, breakfast, all the guys here getting ready, getting changed, so yeah, oh man, it's real. Okay guys, let's go to the bus. Here we are, we've arrived. <laughs> so for those who are feeling hungry, you can pick up a burger. There's the baggage drop here, so I'm gonna have to come back. I'm gonna be coming back here, because I'm off now to uh, pick up my master's bib number and stuff to go on the back of my vest. And uh, so let's go do that because um, time is ticking. Thankfully, having been here two years ago, I was filming as a and as a spectator. Um, I know roughly the layout here, so um, hopefully the, my memory will serve me right and get me to where I want to get to. So I'm here at the England England Athletics area and I've picked up my um, master's number and uh, yeah, I feel like a motorway. I'm the M60, yeah, male category, age 60. So there you go, that'll go on the back of my shirt along with my bib number, so let's get ready. Right, so I'm all changed and it's time to do the final bag drop before the race start. Let's go. Feel free to drop in. And so I'm BBC here York to drop two. off my baggage that I bump into none other than the dynamic duo, <laughs> Colin and Keith. And he's made it ready to Simon, roll. Sparks. Hey, hey, how you doing? Are you ready, guys? Yeah. yeah ready for your sub yeah, three, right. Colin? No. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? What's that? What's that? What's that? What's that? Okay. Yeah. Oh, hey. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'll all three in. No, Here I am. And there's a lady who wants to take a photo of us. Take a photo of us. How random is that, eh? Bumping into Colin and Keith, the dynamic twins. So this is it, guys. This is the end of this particular coverage because I'm not going to take you on the race course. I'm going to drop my baggage, drop my baggage off here, and I'll see you on the other side. Whoa! 
I'm back and uh, well what can I say my initial words to describe that marathon is I just feel I've let myself down I just feel embarrassed humiliated um, I virtually walked the last 10 miles um, trying to put in a jog or whatever but at the end of the day I don't want to be too hard on myself as a number of people have said and I just felt like crying all the way back that last time it was just like I don't know this and this will sound harsh or whatever but it felt like hell on earth because you just you just want it to end and um, but the DNF was never on the cars for me I made sure I got to the end I finished I got my medal yes I got my medal so it's a marathon ticked off I cast that to one side bad experience but lessons as they say are learnt and um, yeah it just goes to show that uh, it takes me a lot longer to recover from a marathon as easy as I may have taken London um, the legs just didn't have it and uh, I'll tell you more when I get back to the van but right now I just feel um, very sorry for myself and very let down let myself down but hey life goes on before I do my quick summary, whilst I was running on the course, there was a couple of guys who came up alongside me and I knew they were going bang on, sub three marathon pace. And here he is, Leon, you ran sub three. I did, my very first one, uh, absolutely ecstatic. I'm still ecstatic now. I didn't think it was 258, possible. 258, was that right? 258 and a half, I think wow. it was. I don't know the actual time at this point. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. until I get my phone, uh, I won't know. But yeah, just, uh, I think this was my first marathon, my first road marathon. I didn't know how it would go because the train hasn't gone to plan. Yeah, yeah. But I'm ecstatic. Just, this is my first and last, maybe. I'm so happy for you. I saw you and your friend. I thought you you were bang on sub three times. So yeah. well done, Leon. Thank you very much. Look forward to following you as well. Thank you. I was going to do a quick summary now. I got into the van, but there's queues and queues of traffic. So I'm going to rush out and I'll do an update when I get back. Hopefully soon. So I've just pulled over at the service station, just grabbed some food, get my energy back and sort of had a bit of a reflection, shall we say, of what happened today. Um, I can cut straight to the chase and I can give you the, the uh, violins and the sorry stories, sob stories, feeling really sorry for myself and all that. But uh, as I said, I, I virtually walked the whole of the last 10 miles and, and that was tough. Um, physically mentally i don't know what happened well i think i can guess and that is i hadn't fully recovered from uh, london and that's that's all i can put it on and obviously lack of training losing training and all that type of stuff so i can do a full review and, and, and all that but as i was saying the uh, dnf did not finish was never going to be on the cards even if i had to walk 25 of the miles i was going to walk it but um but yeah, we, we go through these things, don't we? Yeah, they say it happens to us all, but I've got to give a big shout out. I did have a chat with Colin and Keith, the twins, after, and Colin, you're amazing. 2.58, incredible. After last week at Manchester, three hours, that gave me such an uplift, and we had such a good talk. I didn't film it or anything, and like I've chatted to a lot of people, I don't film everything. Um, you know, we don't have to showcase everything, um, but it's done for me. The bad experience there's the yeah there's things to learn um but there's only a real one thing is you can't fake a marathon no no <laughs> you know it's it's uh it's uh you know that's that's pretty obvious isn't it you don't fake those times so people seem to think you just churn out like a machine but it ain't like that we're human beings our bodies go through certain things and we have to do certain things to adapt it and enable us to do those times they don't happen like magic so um i feel quite happy chirpy i parked it i'm gonna head back to my friends over in yorkshire and we're gonna have a nice meal tonight and uh, talk about uh, lots of things but i've virtually moved on i've already eyed up what i'm going to be doing uh, next and i'll update you on that as and when i've finally clicked the button and uh, entered that particular event and yeah it was it was tough you know when people were shouting and cheering you can do it and i've got like eight miles to go and i'd already been walking for nearly two i'm thinking uh yeah 
you know, I think I had some choice words, um, which is not not good. But hey, you know, we we go through these things, and uh, and as of, often as being said, I I don't want to be hard on myself, and you know, I've gone through that, I've moved on, and uh, for me, yeah, life. There's, there's a lot of shit going on in my life, shall we say, and uh, that doesn't help, you know, it's um, it's just one of these things, we, we just have to, uh, I have to work through that and hopefully things will get better next year. So uh, without further ado, that's it, it's not what I was hoping for it to be, um, but uh, hope doesn't get you those race times, training does, and uh, so yeah, put it down whatever the official time is, I think it's 3 hours 51, I got a text. And as I say, you know, I've gone through a feeling of embarrassment and shame and imposter syndrome that I didn't feel I deserved the right to be there in an England vest running that time or finishing in that time. So, um, but yeah, we win some, we lose some. I'll just look back, uh, you know, I'll look back on this. I, I've enjoyed it. I've got my medal here, Yorkshire Marathon. I would I would recommend it yeah irrespective of my time it's great the organization the volunteers the staff there it is so impeccable very well done lovely layout at uh, York University and put it on your list to do if you want to do a marathon it's great um I could talk about the elevation and the route and everything and it's lovely just running around the English countryside here it is beautiful around here and I think the weather was whilst it was drizzly and wet to start with it did stop so it was dry virtually all the way around and it was almost near perfect weather conditions but um, but my legs weren't perfect <laughs> yeah so um, but yeah I would definitely put this down it's a fantastic route lovely people Lovely course. I loved the cheering at the finish. It was like, um, you know, it's like finishing at New York Marathon. It was uh, the roar coming down there. Maybe I should have ran with the camera a bit more. But uh, I think you might have had some effing and blinding uh, for those last 10 miles. But uh, that doesn't make good viewing on YouTube, does it? Or does it? Leave it in the comments below how and what you think. So, uh, and I'd love to hear from you guys. What do you think next? What should happen next? And without me saying the obvious, the obvious is I really do appreciate uh, all your support and kind words, comments, private messages, etc, etc. It's fantastic. But uh, I'm so happy to have finished. Got another medal. That's a marathon done. Not the time anywhere near what I was looking to do. But hey, you know, I've got so much to look forward to with having completed that epic time in uh, London, considering I was going easy. Um, but in, in reflection, you know, was that is that more my pace at that time based on the training I've done and, and the lack of or lack of training <laughs> and training I'd missed with the vertigo and so on and uh, sickness but hey you know we uh, we live and learn and continue on the next cycle so onwards and upwards thank you again I'm gonna go now and travel the rest of the journey um, so yeah what to do eh? what to do bye 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 Thank you.